Hello everybody, welcome to our lecture about the Sudbury Immigration Pilot Program. Here we can see the page for the Rural and Northern Immigration Pilot Program focused on the city of Sudbury, Ontario. And in this website, we can see this is the web page that was created for the city for applicants looking to participate in this pilot program. These are the immigration options. We have some explanation here. But basically, if we continue just reading after reading the information, we can come to this part of the website, Sudbury Rural and Northern Immigration Pilot Project. And it just gives you the information and description of the program. And basically, just de describing the city and what is the good things that any immigrant may consider in order to choose Sudbury as their destination. We have three choices here like for the candidate, for the employer, and for the rural and northern immigration program draws that they're going to do. And also, they have some notes at the end for people that have a job offer, but they are not sure if they can use that to apply for the rural immigration pilot program. They need to email to this email address, move to subbury at subbury.ca, with the subject line of job offer immigration programs. And for people that were wondering about these candidates that were applying for the Sudbury, you have a note here that said that from the period of February 2020 to March 2020, only applicants applications of candidates who have resided in Sudbury before the day of March 1st, 2019 will be considered. So very good note. So people that are living already in Sudbury knows what they stand for during the process. Okay, let's take a look at the this part of the candidate. First, let's see the draws here. This is the draws for the rural program. And basically they have the first draw that Sudbury did was in April 23rd, 2020. They invite six people, six candidates were invited. And it, the round was at 8.20 a.m. that day. And the score that were the, the qualified was 280. That was the lowest score, ranked score that qualified for this invitation. And of course, the breaking rule was that they consider people that have applied or were in the backlog of applying until April 15. So that was the tie breaking rule. And from there, and the candidate that was in the pool was uh, check, review, and only six invitations came out out of that poll okay so this is interesting to know this information then if we go to the application process this is the main content of this section we can see that these are the application steps and important that you write down the email address move to subreddit at subreddit.ca for any questions you might have for the application the period that they are covering to be a labor in an occupation in the labor industry will be for the period of February 1st, 2020 till October 31st, 2020. So between those two dates, February 1st and October 31st, this is when it's going to be eligible occupations in the labor industry will qualify. So they have a specific industry that they're looking for to fill and help attract candidates and talents from outside Canada. Let's take a look. So here we have the eligible industry and the eligible candidates. The eligible industry will be mining supply and service sector and it's open to people that live in Sudbury and people that applicants that live outside of Sudbury. Tourism in the industry of tourism you have people that live in Sudbury and people that live outside of Sudbury. And basically outside, we mean abroad, of outside Canada. Any sector, any sector, then only candidates that can, that can apply are going to be those candidates that are already living in Sudbury. So, so there are only two industries that people from outside Canada can apply. If you're living in, in Sudbury, like a student or, or accompanying a spouse of a student, then you can apply to any sector. But if you're living outside of Canada, then you can apply only to the mining and service sector and the tourism sector. Okay. And here the information. 
so you understand the, the terminology used in this uh, industry. Then we can see here the eligible occupations for primary applicants. This is for the primary applicants. Then you have the NOC code here and the occupation name. We have management occupation, and business finance and administration occupations. And if we just show more here, we can see here the rest of the occupation. So management occupation overall, qualified business finance and administration occupation overall, a natural and applied science and related occupations qualified. But when it comes to a specific occupation, then we go to the NOC 3413, uh, it comes for nurses, aides, older girls and patient service associations. And then you have all the lists here that include several occupations and you need to check. For example, if you are a chef, you are included here. If you are a cook, you are included here. You are a butcher or meat cutter, you are included. If you are a baker, you are included. If you are an instructor of person, a person with disability, you can, you can apply. If you are a social worker, you can apply. Early childhood educators, you can apply. And executive housekeeper, you can apply. If you work in accommodation, travel, tourism, you can apply. Customer and information service supervisors, you can apply. Cleaning supervisor, you can apply, okay? And people in the trades, transport and equipment operators. Overall, the general, the general people can apply. And people in natural resource agriculture can apply. And occupations in manufacturing and utilities all can apply. So these are the list of the people that can participate and are eligible to, to participate in the subway. So we continue with the process and the steps. What we can see here is that basically you have a step one to make sure that you can meet the IRCC federal eligibility requirements. We saw that already. Step number two, you need to meet the community requirements. And here we have the form for the as assessment factor point minimum cutoff for the information can be found. There's a form for the city of Sudbury that we need to fill out. And so you'll be able to check if you can meet all the requirements. And the community selection committee will be assessing every candidate based on these criteria that they have. Step three will be to find full-time permanent employment in Sudbury in one of the eligible occupations that we saw for an employer that is operating in that industry, okay? And we can see the information here. The city of Greater Sudbury will not assist candidates in their job shops, so they don't, they're not here to do that. You need to do that on your own or with some help of any consultant or recruiter. You cannot count on the city doing that for you. So don't send messages to the city, say, I need a job, help me get a job, because that's not the role. The role is to select the candidates once they have the job offer and make sure that the employer already qualified for that, okay? The employer work on the hiring practices, the interviews and everything. So they're doing that in Sudbury, if the employer has to do all the HR process, the hiring practices, the interviews, offer and check. And it's gonna be at the expense of the employer and the, uh, the candidate, nothing with the city, okay? And you need to have the form for the rural program the offer of employment, you need to be filled out, and we saw that in another lecture, filled out and signed by the employer. And then after that, we go to step four. You need, uh, if you have every, every documentation that you need, you have the job offer, you qualify for the federal eligibility and also for the community, then you're ready to download the form for the rural and northern immigration pilot program, the application. The application for is IMM 5911E. And we can download it here. We have one as part of the resources you can see in the lecture. Then you go to step five. You're gonna fill out then the schedule one form. You're gonna fill out the offer of employment to a foreign national. You're gonna fill out also the rural candidate assessment for the city of Sudbury and also the candidate checklist for the city to also. So you have four forms that you need to fill out and we're gonna include those forms also in our research so you can take a look. Then you will have the step six. This is what the Sudbury uh, Rural Northern Immigration Program Coordinator will request via email. Remember, everything is by email. 
Your resume, proof of age, letter demonstrating your past work experience, language credential for you and your spouse, education credential for you and your spouse, employment offer or, com or confirmation of employment for your spouse, letter of reference for experiential learning opportunity, if you have that one, letter for family members confirming family relationship status in Canada, and the lens of resident in Sudbury, if they're living in Sudbury, evidence of a previous visit to Sudbury, remember about the visit, and evidence demonstrating re a residence in Sudbury. You were an international student in the past or working in the past, then you have to demonstrate that you live in Sudbury in the past. And you have to know about the, the documentation, remember must be copies, and we talk about that in the past, okay? So uh, step number seven, you wanna apply for a review for the coordinator here, and only select the candidates will be contacted. Remember that. So you're gonna apply, you're gonna send the information. The application review is gonna be done by the com committee, community selection committee. And then you go to step number five, meeting the requirements. You're gonna make sure that the committee will check all your application to make sure you're meeting all the requirements. If you don't meet the requirements, you won't be considered. And that's something that you don't want to, to be faced. Make sure that you have everything to meet the requirements. Then in step 10, you're gonna apply for the permanent resident after you receive the recommendation. I as you see, we, re we review it and we know what happened after that. Medical review, financial review, criminal records. And eventually, step 12, you're gonna move to Sudbury when you're gonna make arrangements, contact the city, and after that, some assignment services to help you uh, establish in Sudbury. The timeline, eligible applications will be retained for three months. So if in three months, your application will no longer be good. You need to reapply again. Application will be reviewed by the Community Selection Committee on a bi-weekly basis, okay? So gonna be, by every every two weeks, they're gonna be reviewing the candidate pool and your application, job application timeline will vary depending on the employer, you know that. Whatever time it take with the employer, it's between your employer and you, and the city have no say about it, okay? So other important information, the high volume, remember, if you don't hear from them in eight weeks, then it means that you not haven't been considered. If you haven't heard from them, from the city of Sudbury the committee, then you know you haven't been considered. The email is the one that they're gonna use for communication with you. This city is not affiliated with any immigration or like consortium or lawyer. Remember that if you choose one, then you need to fill out the documentation so they can deal with the immigration consultant or the lawyer that are authorized representative under the Canada law. So uh, then there are other choices that just telling you if this doesn't apply, you probably can try another one. But you need to meet the requirements. They need to be complete. They won't be considered they are incomplete or you don't meet the requirements. Okay. And then here we have the community requirements. The community requirements, as we can see here, they're gonna make sure that they can prove that you really have intention to live and work in the greater Sudbury. They're gonna prioritize candidates for recommendation with using a point-based system. So you, the higher you have those points, the better to be qualified. You're gonna see how you can contribute to the economy in Sudbury. If you are professional or work experienced foreign worker, in an area that is high demand in Sudbury, they will contribute to the need of the Sudbury local economy, have a good relation, and for details of the assessment factor, you need to check this form. I'm gonna show it to you later on. This, this is a form for candidate assessment form. You need to be sure that you fill them out and check it to see if you meet the requirements. Thank you very much.